Thanks for joining us today. My name is Susan Pierce. I am a product manager in data analytics here at Google Cloud. Today, we're going to be talking about startups and data and analytics. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about startups, I think about leading edge technology. I think about disruption. I think about challenging the status quo. And in my experience, startup founders are kind of superheroes. So today, I have with me two amazing superhero startup founders, Tiffany and Dell, from this amazing company called Acclinate, which is disruptive the healthcare industry and clinical trials. So welcome, Tiffany and Dell. Um, tell me a little bit about your personal superhero origin story and how Acclinate got started. You can call me Batwoman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and thank you so much for having us. Thank you for asking. Um, it's always it's always good to go back to the beginning and remember why you started. And it is our driving force. For me, I was given up for adoption because I'm biracial. So my biological mom kept her Caucasian children. And I, every time I went to the doctor, I was like, I don't know, I don't know all my health history. And so I could never really make a fully formed, um, educated healthcare decision. I became a mom at 19 and was forced to make decisions for someone other than Batwoman. And my son was unfortunately diagnosed with asthma and he was um, put in the hospital. While he was in the hospital, he was given albuterol. Albuterol is the most commonly prescribed drug for asthma, but it is 47% less effective in African-Americans and 67% less effective in Puerto Ricans. And it was kind of like that aha moment. I'm Batwoman. Why didn't I know this information? So what... What, the, what is the problem? I had no idea that albuterol was developed during this thing called a clinical trial. I didn't know about the process, and I definitely didn't know how I or my son could be involved in that process. And so I called my friend, Thor, and <laughs> Thor said... Well, I'm not going to claim to be a superhero at this point, like Batwoman over here, but Susan, I mean, the origin story is really important, as you mentioned. It's what drives us every day in our mission. And, and you heard Tiffany's. And for me, uh, my mom was a healthcare professional when I was in my teens. And she unfortunately contracted tuberculosis while she was on the job. She died a year later. And it was shortly thereafter I discovered there was a clinical trial going on in, in the area looking for people with tuberculosis, just like my mom. But we never knew about that. And so for me, Acclinate and our mission for health equity through inclusive research really stems from wanting to make sure somebody does not have to go through that same experience again. That's really powerful stories. Thank you for sharing both. And there's a, a lot of shared experiences between the, the two of you. Now, um, in starting Acclinate, uh, you were members of the Google startup programs. So you were able to take this really powerful mission that you have, um, and now you have tools available to you to kind of uh, you know get you started on the, the technical side of things. Tell me a little bit more about the startup program, and then fundamentally, why Google? Why did you end up going with us? That's a no-brainer. <laughs> Um, you know, we knew we had the shared lived experience and we felt like it could become our competitive advantage. I mean, it was something that industry couldn't go by. They couldn't figure out how to include more African-Americans specifically in their clinical research. And so we literally Googled it. What else do you do when you have a question? So we went online and we looked for resources that were available for founders like ourselves. Um, just happened to be that Google also had Google Black Founders Fund. And so it was kind of like, could we be in both programs? They both supply benefits um, that are super valuable and could allow us to scale our company and our ideas and dreams. And at the time, we were on a competitive platform. Uh, I'm not going to say who that competitor was, of course. And that, and that platform was okay for us to start, Susan, but the issue for us is as we were scaling the company, we needed something that was going to scale with us. And so when we were introduced to Google for Startups and specifically GCP, we knew that that was going to be a technology platform that was going to allow us to scale. And so uh, along with the technical credits that we were provided, along with the technical assistance that we were provided, the mentorship that we were provided, it was a no-brainer for us, and we have not regretted that decision at any point in time. 
Well, I'm glad to hear it. Mm -hmm. So I, I work a lot with BigQuery. It's one of the products that I support. Um, one of the, the common perceptions that's out there is that BigQuery is this you know, really powerful, I mean, it is a very powerful analytics engine. It is the Porsche. And a lot of companies, especially early days, you know, startups, you, you need the Toyota, you don't necessarily need the Porsche. Um, what's been your experience with, with tools like BigQuery? I like the analogy with the Porsche. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and, and the reason I like that analogy is because just because you have this power doesn't mean you have to use it all, right? Yes. Uh, and it's about how far do you press down on the pedal to get to where you want to go. And I think the great thing about BigQuery is that you can be early stage and not need all the functionality and all the power that BigQuery provides to you, but it still provides you with the tools to be able to, to pull this engine out into the street and be able to manage it in the process, if I can stick with that analogy. Sure. <laughs> and so for us, <clears throat> Vertex AI was a great tool to, to utilize with BigQuery. It allowed us to take a relatively small data set and to build our algorithms from that relatively small data set. We used explainable AI, which is part of that platform as well too, to help us get a better understanding about the predictive modeling. Uh, and, and just to clarify, for people who aren't familiar with our model, we have the ability, Susan, to be able to look at people within our community and to know what is their likelihood of actually taking part in a clinical trial. It's what we call our participation probability index. And so explainable AI, Vertex AI, BigQuery allowed us to build those algorithms in a way to have very high levels of predictability. Tell me a little bit more about the predictive analytics that, that you're working on, that you're building, because um, really the fundamental goal is to decrease or eliminate racial biases in, in a lot of these predictions. So tell me a bit about how you're doing that. Yeah, absolutely. I think Tiffany can probably talk about our front-facing platform, and then I'll talk about how we link that to our, our back-facing, our back-end platform. Yeah, and so our front our forward facing community brand is now included. And on the now included platform, we access and engage communities of color so that they're able to make informed decisions. That might mean we provide you a survey or an event at a local community center, um, provide you opportunities to learn about clinical trials and how people can actually be included and involved with the clinical trial process. And so I'm learning about the behaviors of the individuals that I'm meeting to really find out how they make healthcare decisions. Have they ever considered clinical trials? If you were ever going to consider a clinical research, who might you consider it from? Would it be a family member? Would it be a healthcare provider? And so as we learn about these behaviors, it is then feeding our backend system that we call edict. Yeah, all, all that engagement on the front end, Susan, creates trust and it creates data. And that trust in the data is what we use in our backend platform called edict, which stands for Enhanced Diversity in Clinical Trials. And so we are making predictions about our community members' willingness to take part in clinical trials from all of that engagement that's taking place. And we have to be very careful because if we look historically, only about 5% of clinical trial participants come from African-American descent and only about 1% come from a Latinx or Hispanic communities. So if we're not careful, the data that we use to train our models on who has already taken part in trials historically will only exasperate those issues. And so it was very important for us to go in and have some stewardship over the, the modeling to be able to pull some levers and then make some adjustments on the predictive analytics mm -hmm. to be able to make sure that we weren't contributing to the problem versus trying to alleviate it. That makes sense. Yeah, you have a, a bit of a hill climbing problem there because your initial data sets are, are somewhat limited. So you need to add more data to the mix. I like the kind of bi-directional approach that you're taking. Um, what's the impact been so far in terms of growing the, the set of data points that you have? Like how much data are we talking about? And then how has that been growing over time? Our community right now is 20,000. And our goal is to get to 100,000. Um, and that's lives impacted. So those are people who are, who are opted to participate in clinical trials or clinical research, because clinical research also happens for eyewear and other mm -hmm. medical devices and fun things, um, and or have been afforded an opportunity, period, across the board. And so um, 100,000 by the end of the year. <laughs> yes, very aggressive goals. And, I like it, and, I like it. And the thing to keep in mind is for every 100,000 community members, we have significant amounts of data for those individuals, right? We have data on 
uh, social determinants of health. We have mm -hmm. data about their, uh, their habits when it comes to certain disease states or therapeutic areas that they're leaning into to understand more about. And soon we'll have the ability to tie into electronic medical records and clinical trial management systems. And when we do that, we will be ingesting even larger amounts of data. But the key there is that that's not a concern for us because we know we've got a platform that we're just scratching the surface on when it comes to its ability to both ingest that data and analyze that data in real time. Right on. Tell me a little bit more about how you're using the, you know, Vertex AI, BigQuery, some of the other products um, to really highlight some of these disparities. Yeah, so I mean, the key for us is to understand that when we look at our communities of color, there is a reason for the historical low participation rate when it comes to clinical trials. And it's easy to talk about things like Tuskegee and the, the horrible incident that happened at Tuskegee is the primary reason. But we have many more data points to help us be more well-informed about what's contributing to someone's hesitancy or their lack of participation. And so our platform is really trying to take those things into account. So for example, our system is smart enough to know that if there's a trial going on in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and we are in New York City, which we happen to be in, our platform is not going to let the community member in New York City know that there's a trial going on that they need to go to Atlanta for, unless it's for a stage three cancer trial, where it may be the only treatment option mm -hmm. that's available to them. So our platform has to be smart enough to be able to make these determinations on the fly. Uh, and that's what we've trained the algorithms to be able to do. Okay, and then how are you getting this information back out into the communities? Mm -hmm. A lot of it is through uh, trusted activation points. And so we usually say, I mean, our company overall will move at the speed of trust. And trust is really, really hard to earn. It's, it's really easy to lose. And so we, we rely on people who are already within the communities to then carry the message out for us. I meet Dell. Dell tells his friends and his family members about this tremendous opportunity to participate in clinical research. And he's honest and says, I've never considered it before. We meet more people with that simple lived experience of lack of knowledge and lack of access um, than ever before. And so we rely on that. Also, the Google for Startups program allowed us free press, right? I mean, people got to hear about Acclinate and it was associated with Google for Startups in such a way that it also added credibility to our brand and to our name. And so even within these minority populations, rural communities, people know Google and people just assume this company is probably trying to do something really big and impactful because Google says so. Um, and it, I mean, and I kind of joke about it, but it, it really matters. And I think that that's how we're going to be able to get into people's hearts and to their homes to really make the impact that we want to make. We could be doing a lot of things right now, but we want to look back and know that we made a difference and we're really able to do our part to achieve health equity through inclusive research. It sounds like you are. It's a, definitely a fantastic mission. I'm very excited to, to see more of Acclinate in the press um, and hear more about your successes. Uh, what other advice would you have for founders, either going through uh, the startups program, um, any other program, or just you know experienced from starting your own startup? Don't be afraid to ask questions. <laughs> no question is a stupid question. Um, I mean, I, I remember the first, I'm a non-tech founder. So the first time I heard about BigQuery, I was like, what is this? <laughs> and I wasn't afraid to ask. And I mean, you know, fortunately I was afforded mentors who could walk me through the process and kind of train me up. Um, I feel like number one piece of advice, do not be afraid to ask. The other thing I will say is it's very hard. For anybody who is listening to this right now and you're thinking about starting a company or you have an early stage company, it's important to know that this is not going to be an easy path for you. And our origin story that we shared with you earlier, Susan, is really what drives us every single day. So we mention it because when we're in the office at five o'clock in the morning or six or seven or eight o'clock at night or on weekends, it is our, our vision of achieving health equity through inclusive research and not having that same situation happen to another mother or to another son, as was the case with Tiffany and myself, that's really what drives us, but it's hard. Which is why the Google for Startups program, which is why GCP and the tool sets that are provided to founders through their program is so important. Because be, be, between raising money, if you're doing fundraising, 
finding a team that mm -hmm. you can bring together to, to grow your company, trying to get the attention of the marketplace to help them understand that you have a solution that's innovative and, and it's different from what they're used to. What you don't want to do is make your technical problems uh, harder than they need to be. And that was for us what was really valuable about being part of the Google program was the assistance that was provided, the tool set that was provided. And so um, we can't thank Google enough for that. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's a really great, uh, fascinating story. I love hearing about what you've been doing at Acclinate, um, the progress that you've been making, and I can't wait to hear more about your company and see your success with those 100,000 uh, you know, community member growth or people lives impacted. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you all for joining us today as well. I, I hope the startup founders in the audience learned something and potential startup founders uh, also have some food for thought in terms of programs available and and some of the challenges that you might face. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed our session here today and have fun with the rest of Google Cloud Next. <laughs>